2021 was the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. But in 1921, the success and longevity of Mao Zedong and his 12 CCP co-founders was anything but guaranteed. The rise of the CCP is a story of a small band of young men who navigated a treacherous political landscape to eventually become an economic superpower rivaling the United States. That story has shaped the trajectory of modern China and the career of Harvard Kennedy School professor Anthony Sage. On this episode of Behind the Book, we speak with Professor Sage about his most recent book, From Rebel to Ruler, 100 Years of the Chinese Communist Party. 100 years ago, the newly established Republic of China was in a state of intense political and intellectual fragmentation. The 1911 revolution had brought an end to over 2,000 years of Chinese imperial rule. The official government of the Guomindang, the Nationalist Party, was wrestling for power with a network of warlords. The Soviet Union was encouraging anti-imperialists in China to establish their own communist regime. And the May 4th movement of 1919 inspired many Chinese students to explore Marxist philosophy. Thirteen of those young activists would go on to found the Chinese Communist Party. Eventually, they'd managed to win over China's majority peasant population, despite a civil war and a devastating Japanese invasion. In less than 30 years, they'd take power in a newly inaugurated People's Republic of China. It is an extraordinary story. You know, you start with a bunch of kids gathering in a safe house in Shanghai with this idea that, you know, we're going to be part of a global proletarian revolution that's going to bring, you know, power uh, to the working class. We've seen a number of kind of one-dimensional explanations, which none of which I've ever found satisfactory. Contrary to the official history of China advanced by the current day CCP, Professor Sage argues that the party's rise was anything but inevitable. Context, strategic allies, and luck all played a role. What Sage does attribute to the CCP itself is its adaptability. On paper, the CCP looks like a traditional Leninist party, operating with a top-down model known as democratic centralism. And to be sure, the CCP has always concentrated power in a single leader and maintains a strong apparatus of propaganda. But with 95 million members and a country of immense ethnic, linguistic, and religious diversity, the CCP has had to learn how to adjust its central directives to fit local conditions so it can maintain its legitimacy. So as a result, what we see is not the kind of unified, disciplined party that we're always being told about, but really an amalgam of different ideas uh, merged into that one party. And also a party which, again, despite what it tells us, actually has a considerable number of factions within it. Sage says these adjustments have rewarded the CCP with more loyal community leaders, especially in rural areas of the country. That adaptability has its limits, of course, particularly when the CCP views local activities as a threat to party dominance. Where it really becomes a problem, I think, is uh, in the areas such as Tibet and Xinjiang which clearly have a different narrative about their own history, which is distinct from the narrative the Chinese Communist Party tells. It's also a narrative that links to a world outside, whether it's in Xinjiang, out into Central Asia, or whether it's in Tibet, uh, to the Dalai Lama. At a ceremony marking the 100th anniversary of the founding of the CCP in 2021, Xi Jinping proclaimed that we will achieve the goal of building a great modern socialist country in all respects and fulfill the Chinese dream of national rejuvenation. Whether Xi will fulfill the Chinese dream remains to be seen, but Professor Sage's careful analysis of the CCP's legacy offers historical clarity and a thrilling story. The book is From Rebel to Ruler, 100 Years of the Chinese Communist Party, written by Anthony Sage, Daewoo Professor of International Affairs at Harvard Kennedy School. It's published by Harvard University Press. 
This has been Behind the Book, a production of Library and Research Services at Harvard Kennedy School. Find past and future episodes of Behind the Book by subscribing to Harvard Kennedy School on YouTube, following us on Twitter at HKS Library, and visiting our website.